Today I'm going to work on turning this stack of spruce 2x10s into a twin size bed. The goal is a fairly simple bed, and this is the design that I came up with in SketchUp. So normally the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort through my stack of lumber. I'm going to look for the prettiest boards, the boards that I want to feature in prominent parts of the piece that I'm building. But the client wants this either painted black or stained dark black. So yeah, we really don't care about pretty grain. So this one board has got a noticeable twist to it. So I need to make sure it's used for the shorter bits. I think I'll cut it up to use for the legs. So the legs are two and a half inches square and at the footboard they're 23 inches tall, need two of them. And at the headboard they're 37 inches tall. So I made up this really complicated little plan which basically tells me that one two by 10 is enough for the legs. I'm gonna rip the boards into three inch pieces and then I might joint and plane them a bit before gluing them up into the leg blanks. These are being glued oversized, so they'll be trimmed later to size. So right now we just need to get them glued together. It doesn't need to be super, I mean you want a tight joint, but if it slips a bit, that's no big deal. For the headboard, I need one nice big piece 16 inches wide by 39 inches long. So I picked out one nice long straight plank and I'm going to cut it in half and that's basically going to be pretty much what I need for that large headboard. I'm probably going to plane it just a little bit and then I will glue these two blanks together and then later tomorrow I will trim it down to 16 inches finished size. We do want to make sure this is absolutely flush. And the next day we can get it all out of the clamps. The next thing I'm working on is the footboard and the lower part of the headboard. And that was pretty easy because all I had to do was take a two by 10, cut it in half, and then you know rip out a four inch chunk and rip out a seven inch chunk though. I ripped them a bit large to begin with because I want to get them dressed. And if I was thinking ahead, I would have had these dressed at the same time as I did the headboard because they need to be pretty much the same thickness. So a bunch more planing and then I can start trimming them to final size. I've got my Dalmax jig set up with 3 8 inch inserts and I've got a few spacers here to help center this on the piece and I will be using this to drill dowel holes in the lower and the upper headboard assembly and then corresponding holes in the legs. The legs are much wider than the headboard pieces, so there I fitted in a whole bunch more spacers into the jig to bring the holes towards the middle more. And then I uh, just checked and it's going to be centered about like that, which should be good. And it looks like I got all the holes in the right spot. Here we go. First test fit of the headboard, that looks good. I'm gonna set that aside now and do the same thing with the footboard. And then we will move on to tapering the legs. I could have tapered the legs before, it just makes it a lot easier to drill the dowel holes if everything is square. It makes it easier for measuring and for fitting the jig and all of that. I just have to remember to taper them now before I glue it up. Longtime viewers have probably heard me refer to plans as guidelines rather than rigidly following them. And that's happening here. I'm working on laying out the tapers on the legs for the headboard and the footboard. And I was laying out the legs and I just wasn't sure about them. So according to my plans, I'm tapering the bottom section of the legs and I was gonna taper it down to an inch and a half and I laid it out and then I stepped back and I look at the whole thing and it just seemed a little bit small 
for something as, as beefy as a bed and I just increased it just a bit. So I'm now I'm tapering down to an inch and five eighths and I think that's going to make the leg just look a little bit better. I've just never gotten around to building one of those fancy tapering jigs for the table saw. I usually just freehand them on the bandsaw. With a, with a wide blade it's going to cut fairly straight and then I will just finesse it either with a hand plane or on the sander. Especially on a bed where the legs are really widespread, a little bit of variation is not going to be noticed. So this will, I mean, there's more than one way to do it. Next, I'm going to give everything a round over, and since all the headboards are recessed along the front edge, you know, there's a reveal, I don't have to do any starting and stopping, I can just do round overs over the whole edges, all the edges of all the legs, and of course the bottoms as well to prevent chip out. And at the same time, I will be putting a round over on the top and bottom edges of the headboard and the footboard boards. Okay, here comes the stressful part. I've got the parts laid out for the footboard and I'm going to glue it up and I'm just going to leave the camera there running. So I'll probably do it high speed, but five dowels at each end. I'm going to put the dowels in the legs first, tap them home, and then I will be putting the glue in the footboard and then bring it all together. Put a little glue in each hole. Use a big toothpick for spreading it around the sides. Now onto the headboard, the headboard, footboard. There we go, nice tight joint on both sides. Let's check the corners. Let's see, 49 and 5 eighths. Forty-nine and just about five eighths. That's pretty good. Now onto the headboard. I mean, in principle, the headboard is just no different from the footboard. But there's bigger boards, more dowels, so it's going to be. Uh, hopefully, it will just go together well. That's nice. Now, the other side. Okay, you missed all the fun because I suddenly realized I had this panel the wrong way around, so I quickly knocked everything apart because the glue is fresh and put it back together the right way. Sorry, sometimes you just have to ignore the camera. But I am going to be honest about my mix-ups. The reason I had to flip it over quickly is on the back of the headboard there is here one and two sap pockets where they're actually recessed into the wood of the headboard. In fact, here's another one here and here there's a couple of knots that where where it's just the wood is not smooth. Now I mean I could fill all these with epoxy because it's going to be painted, but 
And speaking of mistakes, here's a gap. This is the lower board from the headboard and there's just a spot here where, well, I ran the uh, taper just a bit too high. Here's the other side, nice and tight joint. The taper was supposed to stop about a half inch below this. But on this, but on this side, it just, I, I was just using the hand plane and it just went a bit too far. But it doesn't really matter because the mattress is going to be positioned somewhere around here on the headboard. So this is going to be below and tucked against the wall. So nobody's ever going to see it. But in the interest of full disclosure, yeah, made a mistake. Oops. Oh well. And again, I know I said we're painting it, but I still couldn't help myself with doing some green matching here. I made sure that the, the legs, the footboard legs and the headboard legs, they both have the nicest grain on the visible part and then this will this will be the side which is not so nice that'll maybe go against the wall I don't know I really want it to look its best even if it's going to be covered in paint moving on now to the side rails I've taken my last two two by tens and I've cut them down to 75 inches in length and now I'm just going to throw them through the planer quickly just light pass on either side just to clean them up and then I will be ripping them to width and then the part that I rip off will be glued on to make the ledge for the bed slats. My assembly table has a nice flat top so that makes it a good place to assemble the side rails. We're putting the slat support onto the side rails of the bed. Gluing them up should make for a nice straight and flat side rail. Well, better too much glue than too little. That's a lot to squeeze out. I then just let it uh, dry overnight. And then I can get the clamps off. Then I'll sand the whole thing and we'll round over the edges with the router just like we did with the headboard and the footboard. So I got the sideboards ready and earlier I finished the footboard and the headboard. So now we get to put it all together. I like to use bed bolts for connecting the side rails to the headboard footboard. It's a strong connection, but it's also easy to take apart for when you move. So I bought this set from Lee Valley. It's pretty simple. You get four of these. You got a bolt, a washer and a barrel nut. And the bolt goes through the leg of the headboard. First we will, we will counter bore a hole so that it will be recessed. That goes through the leg. And then the side rail here, we will have a hole drilled in like this. And then another hole drilled in from the side for the barrel nut so that you can access it afterwards. I'll throw up a diagram here from the Lee Valley website that gives you a sort of a cutaway view of what we're going to be looking for. And in addition to the bolt, I'll also drill some holes for some dowel pins. They'll go like that. And these are just for alignment to sort of keep the side rail vertical so it doesn't twist or anything. This is, this is providing all the strength. So when it comes to drilling, I could take the footboard and the headboard and get them on the drill press for drilling those three holes. But then you also got to drill the matching holes in the side rails. And side rails are 75 inches long. There's no way you're going to get that on the drill press. And so the simplest thing to do is to get a carefully sized block of wood and drill some holes through that and then use that to guide your drill. I'm going to use my dowel max jig because it's basically the same thing except it's a little more precise because it's machined aluminum and it's just going to hopefully make things easier for me, but we'll see. I measured 15 inches up from the bottom and made a mark because that's where the, the height of the bottom of the uh, side rails. And then I took that mark and I moved it around to the side and then I also need to move it around to the other side. Let me explain. Here I've stood up the footboard and this is a stand-in for the side rail. The side rail is going to attach like this. 
the bed bolt's going to go like this. So on this side, I need to countersink a hole to receive the head. And on this side is where I'm going to drill the holes for the dowels for, uh, for alignment. So actually, I want to drill all the small holes from this side. I want to drill the big countersink from this side. So we need to have this measurement on both sides. Okay, I've moved the footboard over to my assembly table and I've clamped it in place. I got my Dalmax jig and I've reconfigured it so that it's clamping from below instead of from beside. And I'm going to line my jig up with that pencil line and then clamp it into place. Firmly clamped, but also firmly against the side. And then I'm taking a 3 8 inch drill bit, which matches the size of these holes, and I'm putting it in my end hole here, and I'm just tapping it. Yeah, I'm not actually doing any drilling with the jig at this point. This is strictly for alignment. And again, you know, you could do this just with a carefully measured board. And now I've got a one inch Forstner bit and I'm going to drill my recess, just making sure that I'm on the proper face. There we go. Just, and then do that four more times. And with those four holes drilled, then we can turn our attention to the other side. Again, with the jig firmly in place, firmly clamped that way. Drill. One hole. And then my jig doesn't reach the whole distance, so I move it down and I use an alignment pin. And then the third hole. Now the center hole needs to go all the way through, so I'm coming with a 3 8 drill, getting it carefully lined up. And that should, and then it's pretty much dead center of the hole that we countersunk on the other side. So that's one, I gotta do three more on the other side of this and two more on the footboard. And there we go, one, two, three, four. And all of them worked out. So now the side rails. I've reconfigured the jig and I've got it clamped to the side here and you wanna align the jig against the bottom because that's the way we did it on the headboard and footboard. We started at the bottom and worked our way up. Drilling into end grain is definitely a little bit harder than drilling into the face. So I got the footboard set up here and I've got the bolt and if I push it through its hole, I can see that it extends two and three quarter inches. So that means this center hole needs to be at least two and three quarter inches. And you can see it's not. So I need to drill it out. So I've got a drill bit set with a, a mark. So it's gonna go three inches deep. So there's a little bit of extra room. And I've also upsized this one to 13, 30 seconds. So there should be just a little bit more wiggle room. and then do that with all the others. So finally, I need an access hole for this barrel bolt. And I will put it about there on the bolt, which means I need a hole that is centered at two and a quarter inches. And by holding the barrel bolt up to the hole, I see that if I'm careful, I can drill this access hole from the inside and not go all the way through. This is what we're looking for. I'm using a 7 8 inch Forstner bit, which is a fair bit bigger than the barrel bolt. That just gives us some wiggle room because, well, because we need it. Get this lined up on our mark. And once you hit the spot where the bolt intersects, then you have to slow down and you keep checking and checking because you don't want to drill through the other side.
Then clean it out and check and clean it out and not quite. A little bit more. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And we can look at it and there's not broken through to the outside. little hard to film this part but you take your barrel bolt and you fit it in the hole and then you can push the and from over here you're pushing the bolt and you're trying to get it to line up and when it catches you'll see the bolt move over and it'll pull tight and then this joint will draw nice and snug I don't even have the other three joints done yet, just the one, and yet this is really nice and solid. It's now a few days later, and I've used the time to prepare 10 slats for supporting the mattress. I was running out of spruce, I only have one, so I just went into my stacks and I picked some of the less pretty wood because something like that doesn't really matter as long as it's flat on top. Uh, for my bed, they are 40 inches long and I made them four and a half inches wide. You know, you could make them three and a half inches wide. You'll just need more of them. Um, the wood that I had just sort of suited the four and a half inch dimension. And yeah, I even have a couple where I glued up some scraps. So this, this looks more like a cutting board than a bed slat, but it does the job. I just gave them two quick coats of polyurethane just as a sealant protectant. They're just going to be underneath the mattress. So. I almost wonder if raw wood would be fine too, but I just couldn't bring myself to do that. I then cut a series of blocks and I glued them to the supports on the side rails. Since my, since my slats are four and a half inches wide, I'm leaving a four and a half inch gap. I measured the length and I divided it out and it worked out to two and a half inches roughly. You want just a little bit of wiggle room, but not a whole lot. So these are, does, these don't really matter. I just cut these out of scrap spruce. I, rounded them and sanded them a bit and then just tacked them into place with a bit of glue and some brad nails. Again, space is an issue, so I'll throw up a picture here of what the bed looks like with a dry fit with all the slats in place. Um, as for finishing, I tried a black stain. Um, we didn't really like it, so I'm gonna go ahead now with some final sanding and I'm gonna paint it black because that's what my son wants. I also took the bolts outside and I hit them with some black spray paint so that I can when they're in the bed, they will not show. You can also buy covers. Lee Valley sells some covers, little brass covers that fit, um, but I've never bothered with that. So. And here's the finished piece, all ready to go upstairs to my son's room. And I think that's about it for this one. Thanks for sticking through to the very end. If you're interested in more bedroom furniture, I'll put a playlist up there of my other bedroom furniture type projects. I've got some dressers, some nightstands, that sort of thing. You know, check out one of those. I hope you find it interesting. But otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.